Hey there, Manchester Music, Jeff Manchester, thanks for joining me. It's a video, Orchestral Swarm from Spitfire Audio. My first impressions, my sort of, uh, my, the overall vibe I have about this library, things that I love, things that I wish were a little bit different, maybe don't like so much, and also things that I think you should know about because there have been some sort of additions and improvements to this uh, library and some functionality that um, I'm more aware of now because Spitfire Audio is writing manuals. I guess they hired a technical writer before they were just like, oh, look at our videos and read the, the lit and descriptions and <laughs> that'll suffice. But now I know a lot more about the libraries and how to use them efficiently thanks to the excellent um, documentation that they've been providing, which I don't know when that started. But let's just jump in really quickly here um, and do some little improv. So this is a, a sort of very quick elevator pitch, just some sort of loopy uh, demos of Orchestral Swarm to give you a vibe for what you're sort of in store for. <laughs> Um, the thing that I really like about this library is it complements the sort of swarm uh, standalone pieces from Spitfire Audio before and really builds on them with new articulations and we're entering a dare I say kind of phrase oriented um, kind of vibe with Orchestral Swarm which I love because we get a kind of phrase based articulation where it repeats but it's also very malleable and manipulable and we can go in and change the key or change, you know, our root notes or intervals or whatever. So it's it's phrase like in its sound and in it's just sort of beauty in the way that it's captured. But we can also play with it more and like a phrase library where you're sort of uh, it's a bit more rigid in its structure um, that made absolutely no sense. Let's just dive in here to a couple things. Um, let's go piece by piece. So we have essentially if I open up this uh, tab here. Uh, bones and tubas, brass, horns, strings, high, low, woods, high, low, and obviously advanced. We can go in and play with the individual articulation. So I've just loaded up, you know, everything here into uh, each track, the bones, tubas, the brass, the horns, the strings, high, low, and the woods, high, low here. I've got some other sample libraries open here just to show uh, maybe at the end what I kind of wish this library had, which it doesn't have. Um, but let's just go into some of the more interesting and unique articulations per, um, I guess, section, bones and tubas. Uh, everyone might be rushing over to strings at the beginning, and to me, those are always. I know that strings are very expressive, and they might have some uh, some more interesting articulations than other sections. But I, I love to hear what's what's over in brass, and especially with the woodwinds, which I'm sort of obsessed with these days. So uh, we have some really cool articulations here. Let's start over at the far right. <laughs> So the important thing to note here is this variation slider. I'm not sure if Spitfire have ever had this variation uh, potentiometer in the past, but what we're doing here is we're switching between different articulation variations. So it could be that that same articulation was captured maybe with longer notes. Uh, same notes were played, but maybe they were just varied a little bit. Um, and we can switch and sort of crossfade between both. What isn't clear to me, though, Spitfire, is which 
um, articulations have variation. If all of them do, then that's cool, but I, I get the sense that when I was playing with this variation slider on different articulations, um, I wasn't hearing any variation. And if that's the case, then perhaps we could have this um, variation uh, grayed out, although I could be a, a, like a fool and maybe, you know, if, if I can manipulate it, it's because um, it does have variation in it. I was just getting the sense that it was kind of a placebo effect and I was going, oh, there's some variation or the notes are a little longer, more sustained. And I'm like, actually, I can't tell if they if they are or aren't. And the manual indicates that um, for instruments, I think that have variation, uh, it'll do that. But it doesn't it doesn't tell you if every single instrument um, that was sampled in every articulation therein uh, does contain variation within the sample. So just that's something to to know. Um, let's just continue here with some of the articulations for the bones and tubas. Just play around. I think we had that earlier. Let's try this one. See, here's one, the Flutter Swarm, where I'm not sure if variation is is at all needed here because to me it doesn't sound too different uh, once I cross this little threshold here, this halfway point. Maybe there is a difference and I just can't hear it. Um, this might be a really good opportunity to talk about this R uh, microphone mix here. This stands for Ribbon. And this is really cool because I don't think they've ever, maybe they have included it in past libraries, uh, and I'm a bit of a dope, but I have not seen R uh, in any other mic mixes before, and now it's here. So this is, this is we get access to the ribbon mics, which are usually warm and just have a very pleasing tone and very distinct from uh, cardioid, or sorry, condenser and dynamic microphones. So that's kind of cool. And also power tip, did you know, and I didn't know this until I read the manual, which I'm so happy they're writing now, if you hold shift, you can actually uh, hold shift and click around, you can select multiple articulations and, and have them all sort of play, make sure you're in the same sort of keyboard range though. So we're playing tongued swarm, which sounds a bit naughty, and uh, a few other articulations here. This looks like... Yeah, you'll see the articulations down here. So Tongue Swarm, and if I go over here, Staccatissimo Swarm and Flutter Swarm. And obviously, I, I think you can go to the company's website if you want to know the sort of uh, the raison d'être of this library. Uh, it sounds like it was it was uh, sort of commissioned by the BBC for one of their documentaries coming up, and then they went back to the studio to record more samples to sort of... Um, not mimic or imitate, but sort of capture the vibe of water, the way that ebbs and flows, it's capricious sort of nature, it goes back and forth, and it can be calm, it can be, you know, um, mm. totally full of rage and blah, blah, blah. And um, again, if you're familiar with the swarm libraries in the past, you'll hear that sort of pointillism effect where we just have um, an orchestra playing very short notes interspersed and, uh, in, in, a, in such a way that when everything is sort of played all at once, you get this really beautiful sort of mosaic um, and if you just play one thing, um, it also sounds very sparse, but also uh, energetic in its sort of little um, prickly sort of texture. That made absolutely all scientific terms I'm using here. That made no sense. Uh, let's go to the brass. Only two articulations here, but they're very interesting. swell crescendo and this one is swell dim and again just holding shift and clicking gives us access to both and yes the reverbs are here and we'll talk about them in a moment we have horns as well, and we have access to, to many more articulations than we did before. 
Start at the uh, far left. Continue to swarm. Muted swarm, which is pretty cool. Actually, I think I want to go back just because there's one articulation that I missed that's very interesting. Oh, it's over here. Sorry, we'll get to it later. It's in woods. Woods low. Let's keep going here with horns. Staccato. Sonata. See, again, these sound totally the same when I cross the threshold on the variation slider. Maybe there's a loudness difference? I can't tell. Anyway, I'm probably crazy. Flutter Swarm. Just beautiful, though. Strings high. Here comes the uh, the coolest kid in class here in the strings, pizzicato at the top. A bit more of a scrub there. We're not going to go through all the articulations, but this is that sort of pointillism thing that they were going for, where everyone plays just a very quickly attack note. And then just they, they come in in a sort of improv way. To me, it sounds like it's improv anyway. It's awesome. And obviously, just having your sustain pedal, clicking it, leaving it, and letting it sort of swarm and cluster. And watch when I release my sustain pedal. To me, this, this decay is much more natural than the decay in the swarm libraries, and I'm really happy that I went ahead and, and got this, because I always felt that the swarm libraries, while they sounded awesome when they sort of clustered together, they didn't have very natural decay. Um, so that was one thing I was sort of hoping would be altered here. And of course, we have the ribbon mics accessible here as well. Uh, let's play with some more articulations. Dynamics is right on the mod wheel. Expression is on my little light. You have no idea what I'm talking about on the complete control of the Mark II. Let's keep going. Flotando Swarm. I love the Flotandos, especially in chamber strings, and they're here too in their own sort of uh, way. Short swarms. Oh, this one's pretty cool, actually. This uh, tenuto CS tasto swarm. Kind of woozy and dizzy. Let's jump down here to strings low. Keep it moving. Again, let's start over here at the right where you get the combo swells, which are, you know, sort of the the go-to articulations. <coughs> Excuse me, I feel in this um, this piece of kit. Again, foot on the sustain, hands off. Find some other notes that sort of complement. This could be the intro to a really powerful scene in a movie or a video game. Just the inspiration is right there, ready to go. Jump around here, Whisper Swarm.
lovely again shift gets us access to multiple articulations at the same time we just have to know sort of on the keyboard where we need to place our fingers on our keyboard and let's keep going down here Down of the Woods, which are actually my favorite in this library, my favorite um, sections by far. Mostly because I'm obsessed with woodwinds. Switch here to the uh, the room, room, ribbon mics. Combo swarms. So they're going to be the same sort of, it'll be the same kind of playing, but because it's coming out of a reed instrument, it just sounds different. But I find it complements the combo swarms really well in the strings, low and high. But they're obviously going to be a little bit different due to the nature of the instrument. So I'm turning my head as, a, to, as if they're coming off the speakers. It's in my headphones. Oh, boy. shut up all this place you can hear it I mean, what comes to mind when this plays I mean to me this is a pad this is your long sustained note um, but it's not coming from a synthesizer it's coming from an orchestra and it sounds really beautiful and delicate I mean, to me, I told you clarinets and, sorry, the woodwinds are my favorite sections. Um, and if we combine this, you know, air swarm with like these two together, you know. So cool. Um, okay, let's keep going down here. We've heard these sort of swarms uh, and other articulations. Woods Low is the last one here. And this is one of the cool things is bassoon pop. I don't know, it's just a silly name for an articulation that's really cool. And you won't really get anywhere else, I don't think. Whoops, over here. The idea that these are actually mapped to keys <laughs> that might be, you know, that might be actually, you know, we might hear a root note in there somewhere is really funny to me. 
and cool. That's awesome. Slap Stackmo. We're entering, uh, in my view, this is like Colin Stetson territory, if you know who that guy is. Incredible, incredible horn player, although this isn't a horn, obviously it's a reed instrument, but still, you get that sort of texture. Combo Swarm again. Anything else interesting? Not that this isn't interesting, but these are some definitely new, unique to Woods Low articulations here. So um, now that you've heard a lot of the library, let's just jump through some of the things that are definitely worthy of your attention. I, I mentioned uh, the ribbon mics before and the fact that we have access to them now, which is great. We also have these reverbs here, long reverb and short reverb. These are... Um, I believe the manual calls them convolution reverbs. I want to double check before I say that. Uh, convolution. Yeah. So it says short and long reverb, two types of convolution for you to experiment with. I'm not sure if this means that these are convolution reverbs in that we have captured them from a room. You know, we shot some uh, signal around the room and we captured the impulse response and now we have them to use. Um, I feel like if they were convolution reverbs, in that respect, I mean, here it says simulated reverb. That could just be a synonym for convolution. I'm not really sure. I feel like Spitfire would tell us exactly where they got the impulse responses from. My gut says because this wasn't captured, this whole library wasn't captured at Air Studios, which is where Spitfire typically is. That's where they have seemed to have, like, you know, taken up residence. Um, these were, uh, sorry, the library w w was captured at British Grove, which is a large scale studio. It could be that. What these guys represent is maybe an impulse response from Air Studio so that you can get the sort of Air Studio sound when you're using other libraries that come from Spitfire that were recorded at Air. Uh, I don't know. This whole reverb thing, just I don't care. Like, I will find a way to make these libraries get along, and I, you know, I will never have a client. I can't even count on my hands the time a client is gone. Like, you know, that, uh, that string section with that... Um, you know, that bassoon thing. That just Those two just didn't sound like they're sort of fit in the same dress code. Like, no one, no, no one knows, no one cares. Um, and it's not an issue for me as I usually have, uh, I'm usually sending to reverb something like Altiverb or whatever, or I'm using it right here on the desk of this uh, GUI. So, but they are here for you, I guess, to uh, kind of, again, get the, fit the dress code of other sample libraries from Spitfire or other libraries from other people. Uh, it would make sense that they would sort of shoot some pick noise around uh, Air Studios, capture the convolution uh, reverbs here, and put them in there for you so they get along with other studio reverbs, uh, specifically British Grove, but I don't know. It just doesn't matter to me at all. Um, I love the variation slider. I'm a little unclear as to which articulations have variation. Um, but again, I could be an idiot and maybe someone at Spitfire is watching this and they will tell me that actually all of them do and it would be grayed out otherwise. Um, the other thing that you should know is, or that the other thing that I feel this library could have benefited from, although it sounds wonderful, um, I really like the visual feedback that is included at an articulation selection level in other Spitfire libraries. That's why I have Albion 5 open here. If I go to Albion 5, um, we get this... I don't know, just these little images to me are so helpful before I click. Um, and if we go, you know, we see Gypsy Short, you know, even these, you know, Air, Ice, Trotto, this just tells me exactly what it is before I click on it. Um, and when I go back to says, Strings High in Orchestral Swarm, it's nothing. It's just these little dots that don't tell me anything until I hover my mouse and it's not even available on the hover I have to actually click to get the name of the articulation um, if you go for example to one of my other favorite sample library companies um, Sonokinetic to their Soto library just look at the articulations in the way that they present them here um, I'll click here and we have all these really lovely uh, visually sort of visual feedback um, analogies for what the libraries sound like and it's so helpful um, if this wants to play, have it on mute. For those who aren't familiar, this is Sonokinetic Sato. I go back here, listen to this. So we see that it ascends and descends, and here it's a bit twisted, but 
I'm pressing these little white speaker icons to preview the content, by the way. Now, I want, you know, I want sample library companies to be different and unique in their own right, but to me, I feel like because Spitfire included these in previous libraries and Sonokinetic and other libraries just have some sort of note indicator of what you're going to hear um, represented with a kind of proxy with a visual image, I, f I really feel like it just needs to be here. Um, that is really <clears throat> the long and short of it for me on this on this Orchestral Swarm library. Listen to the demos, watch the videos that they've done. They're obviously excellent. Every time Spitfire has to, you know, they, they, they put on quite a show with their marketing and they've got some amazing, super talented people over there. So, um, but now we have access to ribbon mics. We have some reverbs, not really sure where they're from, but they sound very good. Um, and this is just a whole new sort of um, color in your coloring box you can pull out and use um, and it fits really well with the swarm stuff that they did, they've done in the past and also some of the other sort of pointillistic articulations that they have in other sample libraries I think will gel well with um, with orchestral swarm so that's it for me um, not really a review kind of my thoughts and impressions and some very long-winded uh, playing of all the articulations and stuff like that. So thanks very much for watching. Take care. This is a beautiful, beautiful sample library. Probably my favorite. Um, I know it's not a review, but it's probably my favorite sounding library since Chamber Strings. Um, and Chamber Strings I hold in, in pretty high regard. So thanks for watching. Take care.